All right, hello everyone. This is a quick tip video. By the way, I finished page 15. It's all done. I'll be posting this to um, Instagram pretty soon. Um, but I thought I would do another quick tip video. This is how to set your page up for print when you're starting a new page. This is a brand new page. I haven't even drawn anything. I don't even have a rough yet. Um, so you can kind of see how I do it. Um, I use an 11 by 16 um, canvas size. Let me pop this up a little bit. 11 by 16. This is a good size for me because you want to draw big and then you shrink it down to to um, print, which condenses it and makes it um, a lot easier to fit in all the details. Your lines look tighter. It looks a lot better. Um, the uh, template that I use is based on the Lulu one, which is 10.5 by 6.88. And that should work for most of the other places like Mixum, etc. You might decide that you want to work at a different size or anything else. This is just what works for me. I think it's a good plan. Um, but you can always try and discover that on your own. There's all, all kinds of ways to do things. My way is not the only way to do it. All right, so first thing you have to do is you want to figure out where the margins are. Um, I believe in doing the margins. I start with a, a drawing guide. This is 11 by 16, and you can just even see it puts this little grid on there. You used to be able to actually just plug in your inches and, and, and um, make the grid exactly 0.5 inches, uh, so you could choose a one-inch grid. I think that's what this is because I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So yes, each one of these squares is already a half inch um, there because we've got 11 inches and 22 squares. So what we could do right away is we could take our technical pen and just go... two squares over to create your margins. Now, why do we do uh, a one inch margin? Maybe you just love going full bleed all the time. I don't know. Well, even if you go full bleed, you're gonna need a margin because what happened, the whole point of having the margin is um, no matter what dimensions you work at, when you get it printed, there's actually no telling exactly where the printer is going to cut it off. That area is called the trim. And the trim could be everything beyond this line. From here out it gets cut off. Or it might be everything on this line <laughs> gets cut off. Or maybe they get the whole thing, like maybe they center it in that thing just perfectly or whatever else. But uh, things get trimmed off. So even if you don't have a margin on there, you decided to work at full, full bleed, um, don't put anything beyond this line. We're going to, we're going to call this our safe area. Anything that we put inside here, um, you can put details. Let's say you had a mountain range or something. Whoops. A mountain range and you want to go full bleed without the margin. It's okay to do that. Um, but don't do this. Don't say, don't put a speech bubble back there. Because if the speech bubble gets cut off, it could cut off parts of the parts of the um, words, make the comic confusing, and don't put any other um, important details. Let's say you got a guy with a gun. What if the gun gets cut off, right? Um, make sure that you keep all your important stuff inside here, even if you go at full bleed. Now, I like using the margin. It's better for traditional comics, and traditional comics are the easiest to read and understand. Um, your entire job, if you're going to be creating comics, is to um, communicate your story in as obvious and as simple way as possible to your readers. You don't want to be mysterious. You don't want to hide details. You don't want to oh, make them ferret it out, stuff like that. I, I don't believe you should actually try and do any of that stuff. Um, should be as simple and as obvious as possible and just do your best writing within those parameters. All right. So the first thing I do is I create this, then I turn my, uh, my drawing guide off. So now I've got a nice blank canvas. 
Um, the next thing we're going to do is I make another layer. <laughs> this layer, we're going to, this first layer, we're going to call this uh, panels. And eventually when I divide this into panels, it's going to have all my panels. The second layer, I take the um, opacity and I bump it down to about half. And why do we do that? Well, it's a much lighter line and you'll never get confused about drawing in the draft layer versus drawing in the inking layer. The inking layer will be completely black. The draft layer will be nice and, sh you know, light gray, you know, depending on how much, um, how much opacity you took out of it. So always do that. Um, and you'll never have the problem of drawing or you'll rarely have the problem of drawing on another layer, not in a way that you'll ever have to worry about it too much. You might have it later on when you're trying to do something tricky or complicated with two inking layers, but you'll never have the problem of um, taking your drawing layer and getting it mixed up with your inking layer. By the way, this is the same as if you were to use quote unquote blue lines. Uh, instead of using blue lines, because the blue throws me off, I just use gray lines, which is the black. Um, line of that I'm going to use anyways, just with the opacity brought down. So the opacity is about half. All right, how many panels should you have? Well, that's up to you. Panels are something that I'm not going to opine too much on because um, it could really go any direction. Some people like a lot of panels. Um, if you watch Sideburns, he does a lot of panels on a page. He's got a lot of stuff going on. And some people like to do like a regular grid, like Ditko was known for doing that nine panel grid, which I envy. I think that's great. Um, you don't have to do that though. So I'm going to do, I'm going to try and do five panels and um, for this page, um, just to uh, show you where it is, this is an action sequence because on page 15, they went into this cave and then there is a hostile cyborg that's in the um, cave hiding. It's going to try and kill them. It's really going to try and kill her because this, um, oh, you know what? I just noticed something. This guy, this guy, where is it? 10%. Scimitar is a valet robot, which means he's not considered to be very dangerous. And so this other cyborg is going to initially ignore him. in his attempt to kill her. All right, so we want to do, here's my idea. Whoops, let me get back my, um. we're on the draft layer, just make sure. We can even write draft or pencils or something like that. I like to use a technical pen for the draft layer. And I want to do two panels. And we'll do it about like that. Okay, here's my tips for doing your panels. Try not to be symmetrical. Don't put your, your dividing line in the exact middle. Make one of them a little bit bigger than the other. Ideally, it should be the most important panel is the bigger one. Um, but even if it's not the most important one, let's say this was a four panel page. On the next row, make your other dividing line a little bit cheated the other direction so that you don't get, let me show you what it, what it would look like if we didn't do it that way. You don't get this. You don't get the most boring layout ever. One, two, three, four. It just looks terrible. Um, or it just feels boring to me. Anyways. The most common layout for most comics is three rows. One, two, three. Um, this one's just going to have two rows. And as I said before, I want to do um, five panels. So this second row down here can have three if we can divide them correctly. And we haven't inked these. These are still on our draft layer. 
I decided I want this one a little bit thicker. How thick do you make your, your gutters? Well, I have a couple of different opinions on that. There is no set number uh, that you have to go through on your gutters. Some people like wider gutters. I always think of like an Archie's type comic or um, a more mainstream comic should have about a quarter inch gutters. Uh, but something that's a bit more stylish um, could have an eighth inch or something like that. Like this is kind of thin here and it seems like it works. seems like it works. Um, play around with gutters uh, to see what you think. And like I said, other people do them differently. Some people just, they don't, they just go full bleed and they just do inset panels everywhere. Um, there's all kinds of creative and interesting things that you can do. The one thing I would recommend is to make it simple for the reader to follow from one end to the other. One thing that you should avoid is something called the left hand stack. Let me show you what a left hand stack is. Let's say this order of panels is probably one, two, three, four, five. Let's say I decided to split this panel into two panels. What's the order? One, two, three. Naturally, we would want to go here. Four. Four, five, six. So this is something you can avoid. Uh, don't do this. Don't put it on five either. It's probably a bad idea to put it on five. I know you may have seen this in manga or something, uh, but it's not a good idea. You can split this final panel if you really have to. I don't recommend it, but if you had to, you can split the right-hand side. Don't split the left-hand panel. Um, don't go for a left-hand stack. You can, however, if you go through like the history of comics, you go even through some of the greatest comic creators, you will find them doing left-hand stacks every once in a while. Every once in a while. And they'll usually put like an arrow. Go here first. <laughs> you ever see that when they say, go a little arrow. Go to this next panel. Um, avoid that. That's an editorial thing. Um, sometimes you just end up accidentally doing it. I had a teacher um, that would, the guy who taught me not to do left-hand stacks, and then I found one of his comics that he had done in like the 80s, and he had a left-hand stack in it. So it's not something that you find yourself consciously doing when you're kind of setting up your layout. It could happen to anybody. It's not the worst thing in the world, um, but it can be confusing. All right. So this is going to be my layout, and... Uh, my recommendation for your first draft is to kind of go through and kind of set up the action. Um, one thing that you want to do is you want to have at least one panel, at least one panel where you show the entire full figure of at least one of your characters. Um, if you do every panel, talking heads, it's quite boring. I know that's what gets done now like over at like the, the big corporate comics places, but I would avoid that. All right, so in our case, we want to have our bad guy coming around the corner and confronting. He's got like a bucket head. And what, what, what hand is he carrying the gun in? He had a gun. He had it in his... Uh, if I was standing this way, I guess that's my left hand. And his right hand is a claw. All right, so he comes, he comes around the, um, the corner. And I think he should like immediately fire. So what are the, one of the things I end up doing a lot is resizing kind of on the fly when I'm at this stage, because you're also going to want to um, think about what the dialogue is, too. So here's here's our guy. Here's Here he is firing his gun, coming around the corner. Might even do like a... You know what we might even do? We could have him confront them first. I gotta figure out how to do it though. While you're doing your 
layout, you can feel free to just draw right over the other panels. And then he's going to be saying something like, here's our other guy, this is Sinatar. He's surprised. We just got to figure out what the dialogue is. Um, so in this case, he might be saying something like, stand aside, humanoids are unauthorized in this area. And I think Centaur's carrying like a piece of Duraloy. Yeah, he's got like a piece of Duraloy like conduit pipe. <laughs> want to make sure our perspective is good. One of the things we want to do with perspective is make sure these characters are a bit smaller. The more I look at it, I'm wondering if it might be better to not show this character from behind. Like maybe I switch the move the camera around suddenly. He says something like, stand aside. Oh, how about even better enemy humanoids? Okay. You want to get the size. Also, you want to standardize what size you're going to work at as far as lettering goes. I'm using Evil Genius. Where is it? Right here. And I'm using the standardized size, in this case, of 12-point type. Right here. And I want to use Bold for Stand Aside Servant. So, And actually, I might even do this as two... Uh, Speech bubbles, maybe he starts out saying that, and then that's the second bubble right here. I think I should have um, Cinetar, whoops, bravely trying to stand in front of uh, Princess here. We have to work out whatever the perspective is to get him to be like pointing his gun kind of away from us. We're going to have to do the, 
the coil technique or something to get to get it right. Oh, and maybe he has his uh, piece of conduit. Okay. Then on the next uh, panel, he's going to be arguing, right? So we could do a close up. So the best way to um, figure out, especially when you get a lot of dialogue going on, is to definitely check out um, Wally Wood's 22 panels that always work. Um, they'll give you a lot of different ideas for how to set these panels up, for especially when characters are talking and dialoguing. Um, you can't just do every panel as a big, big head, <laughs> or even an extremely big head. Like we, you know, here's an extremely big one. We can go like, like that, you know, and go real big. That's not really what we want to do, though. Um, similarly, you don't want to necessarily um, do what I've done here and made this is kind of a boring panel. So we're going to think about changing that one. But um, what has to happen right away, we want to get these guys into action. So now I'm thinking maybe I will collapse this panel right here. So I've got four, one, two, three, four. And you can see my, I don't have symmetry, but I can show, um, I'm going to show my bad guy coming up. And it's always best to have the bad guys attack first, by the way, my opinion. Now i got to move my victim here. We want to make them interact here. So, oof. Oops. If you can't tell what this looks like just yet, <laughs> don't, don't be surprised. Okay, boom. Let me fix this. And you just punch them. And then we're going to have a good reaction shot. You can show that the Cenotaur is not helpless. And he's going to attack back. Okay. So I got to figure out, I think I don't have enough room, so I'm probably going to make this smaller, potentially a lot smaller. Do it. We do this. He's got it in his right hand. Yes, he's in his right hand. So let's do this. Uh, there's our conduit. Slamming it down on this guy. Okay. This brings us down to the other question. This was by Glazello. Um, when do you break the panel borders? And I'll just tell you. 
Uh, the answer is almost never. In fact, avoid breaking panel borders if you uh, if you possibly can always. I know a lot of people disagree with me on that one as well. So like I said, this is what works for me. Um, but the only reason that you should you could break the panel borders when it's a big action shot, um, when something's flying at the viewer, right? You know, like maybe they're knocking over a wall. You might have a couple of bricks coming out or something like that. Um, that is a special effect and is not to be used casually. It shouldn't be used, especially if a character is just talking or they're just discussing something. Or if it's not even a super, you know, mega part of the battle. If you just, if it, you've got to sort of pace your battles. So let's see. I want to do this like this one. Oh, it's going to be hard to draw this this one. So his right hand, like I said, is a claw. I think it looks something like that. Oof. But he's still got a gun. No servant. I'm a royal guard. All right. Twelve. All right. Now we talked about speech bubbles. The way that they should be done is you got to pack up those words and use the panel borders. So I'm not, uh, I'm no servant, I'm a royal guard. Um, and our bad guy picks the Im immediate danger and goes after Senator. Then you both will die. All right, let's select all, bring it down to 12. Now we got the, this whole thing is bold. If you have every word bold, that just means it's just dark. So let's make this um, standard. Whoops. Regular. And we'll take the word both. And we'll make that word bold. So if you're going to use uh, bolds, Figure out which words are going to be emphasized. One way to do that is to, um, oh, that's to say it out loud to yourself. So that should be in regular. There we go. So that's a rough draft. And when I say rough, Yes, I mean really, really rough. <laughs> so um, this is going to be sort of a big bloody battle. We're kind of in the last five pages over here, and there's all kinds of different ways for you to script out your comic and kind of plan it out. Some people take a long time. Some people like me do it a little bit differently. I work a little bit more off the cuff. Um... He punched with his right hand. Is his right hand the, the claw? Yeah, his right hand is the claw. So it's going to be, well, he's going to be in front of it, so we won't see the claw right there necessarily. But we can either see him with his gun out here. And the claw right here. Or some variation. And 
you know, what's often useful is to let it sit with you for a couple of days while you decide if these are how you want to do the panels. Like we might come back later on and decide we want to do something different with some of this. Um, I like this flow. It's only four panels. This should be an easy page to do. All right. That's it for right now. Talk to you later.